Hi everybody, I'm Richard and welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at this little fella. This is probably, well, it is a really famous gun. Uh, maybe not so much the gun, but the crime it was used in. Uh, not this particular gun, but this is the Rom Gesellschaft or the RG-14. It's a German-made gun. Now this one was made in the United States because many years ago uh, somebody lobbied against Congress I guess or something happened and they said we're not going to import these cheap guns into the United States um, so the company set up factories here and made these cheap guns in the United States so they kind of circumvented that law anyways this is kind of a, an alloy frame it's a, like a zinc alloy frame they are really inexpensive guns of course in the 70s and 80s when they were making these things um, they were probably around the 40 50 dollar mark and that's some of the things that people didn't want in the united states they didn't want really cheap guns here because then anybody could get them of course that kind of denies uh people of lesser means the ability to defend themselves but this really is a cheap gun and uh let's take a little closer look at it all right, here's a little closer look at the model RG14. Is uh, This one is chambered in 22 long rifle. I don't think they were chambered in anything else. There were a couple different barrel lengths available. This one, it looks like it's about an inch and a half barrel. You got a little bit of the forcing cone there. And I don't know if you'll be able to see in there, but that cylinder gap between the forcing cone and the end of the cylinder is, is pretty big. Um, yeah, I mean, you're going to lose a little bit of velocity because a lot of your gases are going to escape from there. But, uh, I mean, it is a defensive handgun, and uh, it's pretty small, pretty compact. Um, it's kind of a pain, though, because even though this has a crane to tip the cylinder out, for you to be able to do that, a lot of guns, you can pull this out and turn it and push it out. But this one, you actually have to unscrew the center pin, completely remove it, then you can push the cylinder out and you can load it. Now you cannot remove the cylinder from the crane unless you get you a little tiny screwdriver. There's a little screw right in the front there. You'll have to back that out and remove the crane and everything together. But um, it's a neat little gun. It's an older gun and like I said it's the zinc alloy frame on it. So I think we're going to get some lower velocity 22s, get this thing out on the range and take a take a few shots with it. It is single or double action, so you can pull the trigger and the hammer will, you know, come back and advance the cylinder, or you can just pull the hammer back and then release it. Now it is a rim fire, so you don't want to do any uh, dry firing with the cylinder there because what happens is the the firing pin the firing pin comes forward and pinches the rim up against the cylinder there. So we don't want to do that right now anyways. Um, but like I said, it is single or double action. And you can see a little bit of the firing pin inside there, I hope anyways. Uh, but the hammer actually has to go all the way forward. Um, there is kind of a safety on it. I don't know that I would trust it too much, but um, the hammer will not push forward and force the pin into the rim there. But um, like I said, we'll get this thing loaded up with a little bit of lower velocity ammo or some standard velocities. Get it out on the range, give it a few shots and see how it does. All right, guys, here it is. This is the RG14. I've got it out here on the range. Uh, I'm in kind of the new shooting shed here, the shooting saloon, I call it. Uh, still not completed yet, but uh, just keep watching. I'll put a tag up here somewhere where you can see the progress of the shooting saloon here as I'm putting it together. But anyways, this is the gun that was made famous by John Hinckley Jr. He used it in the assassination attempt of Ronald Reagan back in 81. Um, I'm going to put up one of these uh, Birchwood Casey targets here. We're going to set it up at 7 yards, which is about this gun's effective range. And we're going to shoot some CCI standard velocity. These are uh, 40 grain, 22 long rifles. And then we'll actually try a couple of the CCI quiets in there. You should be able to handle those, no problem. But the reason I want to do standard velocity or even a lower velocity is because this is an alloy frame. It's not a really expensive handgun. It's not a, you know, a $8,000 Cabot uh, 1911. You know, it would be nice to be able to do one of those, but I'm looking at guns that the average guy can get. Um, maybe even not quite the average guy, but um, something you can afford. Um, this is probably not the best choice. It is a lot older gun, so there are a lot more uh, available guns out there now that don't cost quite as much as, you know, 
the really high-end stuff. It's nice to have those high-end ones, but if you can't afford something like that, something like this or something, you know, comparable that's, you know, not in that price range is still an effective tool. But, you know, like Ferris Bueller said, It is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. All right, let's get this thing loaded up. Um, like I said, you got to pull that center pin all the way out. Then you can tip the cylinder out, put your rounds in there. Now this center pin, you definitely don't want to lose it for a couple reasons. First of all, it holds the cylinder in place. But second of all, this is how you eject the shells. You take that pin right there and you push your spent casings out of there. There's no plunger you can hit to eject them. You know, those are a lot nicer guns, but this is, uh, you know, pretty much loaded up one time and hope you can do what you need to do with the six rounds you got in here because if you have to put more rounds in it, it's going to take you a little bit of time. We'll get it loaded up, get the target up there, and give it a few shots. All right, I've got the six rounds loaded up in there, got the eyes on, got the ears in. Let's take a couple shots and see how it does. Again, this is seven yards away. Single action first. All right, there's the first six shots in it. Let's go up there and take a look at the target because really that didn't look too bad. All right, seven yards away. There was my first shot, kind of high. Uh, wasn't sure what to expect with it anyways. But one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not a bad little grouping there for an inch and a half barrel, seven yards away. Um, it's not terrible. It's a little loud, uh, especially being inside the shooting saloon there. But. Um, we're going to go ahead and put a six rounds of the CCI quiets in there and see how that does. All right, again, if you want to eject the shells out of this, pull your center pin out, tip it out. I guess you could shake it a little bit. They'll probably come out. But if you got one that's stuck in there, you're going to take your center pin and use it to push the casing out of there. There they are. We'll get some six rounds of the CCI quiets loaded up. See how they do. All right, we'll do the CCI quiets double action. There's six shots of the CCI quiets. Definitely, I could tell a difference in it. Uh, really couldn't see where I was hitting. So let's go up there and take a closer look at that. Okay, the CCI quiets were all shooting high. That was my first shot with the standard velocity. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, it looks like up in there. Uh, definitely shot a lot higher, but um, definitely a lot quieter anyways. Um, not a bad shooting little gun. It is not, you know, probably the, it's not the best looking, it's not the most expensive, it's not the um, easiest to uh, unload and reload. It's not a bad little gun though for an inch and a half barrel on the thing. Uh, it doesn't do too bad. Or right, this time we're gonna do six shots of the standard velocity, kind of rapid fire, double action only and see how it does. Not exactly sure where those went, but uh, <laughs> I'm not seeing them on the target. Uh, and when Hinckley committed his crime with this firearm, uh, that's what he did. He just kind of indiscriminately pointed in the direction of the president, and uh, he didn't actually hit the president directly, but he caught a ricochet off the limousine, and I believe it hit Reagan under his left arm and lodged in his lung. Um, I mean, it's a terrible reason for this to be a famous gun, but uh, I mean, unfortunately, that's the only thing that kind of put this on the map because it's it's a lesser quality. It's like I said, a zinc alloy frame on it. The only real steel in this gun is going to be the cylinder. The barrel itself is steel, even though it has like a, an alloy cover over it that is the front sight on there. Um, the even the hammer on this thing is the same same zinc alloy but it has a steel insert. I don't know if you'll be able to see that where it actually contacts the firing pin. 
course the firing pin is steel um, everything else though is pretty much the zinc alloy it has plastic grips on it kind of a uh, I don't know what you want to call it like a marbled swirled grip and and this one's in really good shape um, it's pretty clean it did have some kind of waxy coating on it when I got it but um, it cleaned up pretty nice and it seems to function pretty nice too but um, I mean it is what it is it's a cheap gun and it is effective and if this is all you can afford go for it it's it's not a bad gun um, there is no safety on it uh, like I said it's double action or single action and it just works all right six more shots this will be the last six this is gonna be with the CCI quiets again kind of rapid fire at the target and I know it's shooting really high so I'll see if I can't do a little better with this one Nah, not really, but it's uh, not a bad gun to shoot. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a little gun. It will fit in your pocket. If this is what you choose for uh, concealed carry, defensive handgun, you know, it's a 22. It's up to you, but uh, it, it's not a bad little shooter. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review and taking a look at the Chrome Gazelle Shaft or the RG14. If you could hit this button up here to subscribe and hit this button over here to check out some more of my videos. And don't forget to keep checking up on the uh, shooting saloon. Hopefully one of these days it'll be a good looking, functional um, place to shoot at for me. Anyways, thanks a lot.